All right, I think it's ready. <laughs> Whoa, that's intact. Look at that, it's a beater crock. This would have been used for making uh, pies, baking, stuff along those lines, uh, zinc glazed. I hit something down here. about to fill with the water. We got a hutch. You guys, this is a holy grail. I'm in Balfour, North Dakota, standing on what used to be Main Street. There were businesses all along here, restaurants, pool halls, hotels. There was a series of fires that took them out in the early 1900s, but I got permission to excavate the grounds in search of artifacts, so I'll take a walk around and see what I can find. I'm standing on the back lot of where the buildings were on Main Street. There's not much left here, some rocks and an old well, but just down here, I would gritted out the area and push some probe rods through. I hit some stove ashes and glass. I actually felt some bottles. So we'll get this opened up and see what's going on. bottles down here. The use layer isn't deep. I'm thinking it could be a dipped pit. Fortunately some pieces were left. As this is the one I noticed first. Looks like some kind of a liquor flask. It's a tooled top. So I'd put that at about 1905. It looks like some kind of little chemical bottle, pharmaceutical piece. Tooled top, no embossing and some kind of crown top, <sighs> a broken beer. Now for the hutch, there's embossing on it. <sighs> what do we have here? And is it intact? It's intact. Minot bottling works, Minot, North Dakota. Look at that, that is something circa 1905. There's a few variants. This one's beautiful, it looks mint. You'll notice the soil changed color. There's this brown color and there's some white there. Uh, this is the use layer of an outhouse pit. Looks like I have a few pieces here. Uh, some kind of prescription bottle. Unembossed, circa 1905. And another. Huh, Would've had a paper label on it. It looks like the same style, no maker's mark. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff down here. It just drops in. There's a couple pieces. See. Looks like a an Olympia style liquor flask. This has an 1898 patent. Couple more pieces. Uh, okay, this is, I believe, a bitters bottle. It's probably a Beggs Dandelion bitters. Oh, another prescription. Almost looks like a Rex Oval, but slightly different with no maker's mark. Now, this is a solid use layer. 
Notice some more glass pieces. Looks like a drinking glass. That is some kind of drinking glass. Damage is probably why they threw it down. Some kind of a prescription bottle here. Oh, a little uh, liquor flask, I believe. Kind of strap sided, would have had a paper label. May have found a side or a corner. Looks like there's some kind of uh, either medicine bottle or okay, a little liquor flask. Uh, no embossing. You can see where the paper label would have gone right there in the front. I'm trying not to get my hopes up, but I think this is a mini jug. These will sometimes have uh, advertisements on them. <laughs> and there it is. Compliments of MB Hall, Balfour, North Dakota. These were handed out as kind of uh, souvenirs, advertising pieces for local businesses, generally from stores. And uh, yeah, the handle's missing on this, but as far as I know, this is the only example known. It looks like uh, some kind of liquor flask as well. Yeah, a little strap-sided piece. Uh, no embossing. This pit's done. Here's the results. We did get a couple quality pieces here. My favorite being that Minot Hutchinson soda bottle. That stenciled mini jugs, amazing. Got some drugstore bottles, some broken glasses, and some liquor flasks. That chemical bottle. We do have a spot marked out nearby, so we'll head over there next. Well, there's not much left to Main Street, but the hotel stood up there by those old cottonwood trees. Down here, you'll see I have some markers in the ground. These show the dimensions of the pit we're going to dig. I hit a decent amount of glass and some stove ashes down there, so it could be good. Four and a half feet down, we got through a very thick clay cap layer, and there's all kinds of artifacts underneath, as you can see. Uh, from what I've seen, this pit's got some great age. This could be the original from the hotel. There's a little tool top liquor bottle. Oh, got a Mikado style flask. Would have had a paper label on the front there. Well, wondering already if they had a saloon run out of the place, another liquor flask. And another. And another. Some kind of medicine. It's hard to read any of this stuff. The mud down here is insane. J.R. Watkins Medicine Company. J.R. Watkins proprietor or president. And uh, Watkins Extract. Winona, Minnesota. So it's kind of hard to read, just caked in mud. But I don't know if I've ever dug one of these that says uh, J.R. Watkins president on it. That's kind of cool. Got a little uh, like butter pat saucer type thing. It's Ironstone China utility wear, uh, typical with most hotel sites. An old boot. Oh wow. An amber, amber ink bottle. It's uh, Carter's. 
Amber Carter's ink. This is somewhat special. These are usually an aqua color. There's this rust layer here too. Everything's kind of caked. Let's see. Okay, we've got an Olympia style flask. And yeah, these have an 1898 patent on the bottom. That rust is brutal. Uh, Tooltop prescription drugstore bottle, no embossing. It's like a champagne bottle, a turn mold piece. Well, I'm about three and a half feet down, been working through this cap layer and saw some kind of ornate piece here. Uh, could be a bitters or a liquor flask. Let's see. Oh wow, that thing is beautiful. Yeah, it's got a spot in the center there where a paper, paper label would have gone. That's really something. Looks like it could be an old beer bottle. That uh, Reed and Company is broken. Uh, got another one over here. This one might be intact. Oh. Yeah, another broken one. Uh, surprisingly, these beers are found broken fairly often. But uh, there's this, okay, it's a drugstore bottle. I thought it was a liquor flask. It's a Rex Oval style, circa 1905. There's another one here. Yeah, another Rex Oval. These things are never embossed. Just the marking on the bottom. We're getting into some kind of use layer here. You'll see the discolored soil. I noticed a few more pieces. Uh, uh, liquor flask. Looks like some kind of prescription bottle. Uh, yeah. No embossing on it though. Looks like we have some ironstone here. Uh, that would have been something. This was a liquor jug. Could have been a two, maybe a three gallon. It was a big one. part to the jug. Looks like a prescription drugstore bottle. Uh, tooled top with no embossing. And a tooled top liquor flask, same, no embossing. This one looks wedged in. Let's see. Oh wow, it's intact. It was really loose, I thought it I'm gonna have the top broken off. This is early, this is 120 years old. I saw this piece float up here. Uh, it looks like a prescription bottle. Uh, no embossing. Looks like there's some writing on the bottom. Patented April 21st, 1896. That's a really cool style. And I gotta get this crock out. There's a couple other pieces I was hitting with a shovel down there. But uh, this thing could be intact. And this could really be something. Let's see. All right, I think it's ready. <laughs> Whoa! That's intact. Look at that, it's a beater crock. This would have been used for making uh, pies, baking, stuff along those lines, uh, zinc glazed. I hit something down here. Where'd it go? Oh, it's about 
fill with water. We got a hutch. ER Vlandingham, Valley City. You guys, this is a holy grail. I'd say this is one of the top sodas in the state. I had to get this thing cleaned up and it is mint. There's a couple versions known in this. One's an ice blue and one's a green aqua. This is the ice blue version. But altogether, there's only five examples known. And this came off the bottom of the pit. We've only dug a corner. I'm hoping there's more to come. It's been a couple hours since I pulled out that hutch. We've been working on digging down this side. Um, I'm thinking it's a dipped pit and they left just the bottom foot and there's a ton of stuff down there though. We found this power line, so just a reminder, always call and locate. We're in the middle of nowhere, basically in a ghost town, and there's a line running through here. It's uh, coated in rust, but there's a rubber coating underneath that. But anyway, down into the water table. Uh, this one floated up. We haven't hit bottom yet. This is a really cool style. It's a liquor flask, has that kind of bulb neck on it. And I was just hitting all kinds of stuff down in here. Let's kind of pull out the obvious first. Another flask. This one has the uh, stopper in it. And another. I believe these held whiskey or brandy, something along those lines. at the hotel. Huh. A really uh, decorated flask. You'll see I pulled the cork out. I had a bottle explode on me once when I was pulling them up from the water. Looks like there may be a ketchup bottle sticking out of the wall here. Uh, I see we have some loose soil to work in. Uh, yeah, that's a little ketchup bottle. You can hear the sides are trying to collapse. It's some really loose soil in this area. Yeah, it's going. Uh, yeah, I was just hitting all kinds of bottles down here in the water. Let's try to pull up one at a time and. Uh, Make sure the corks aren't going to blow. There's uh, another liquor flask. And another one of these decorated things. No embossing, but it was likely a prominent brand to have bottles like this. There we go, prescription bottle. It's, uh, no embossing on it. And another, and hear that pressure in the cork. All right. There's all kinds of stuff down here. I can't even get the trowel in the ground. Okay, the cork's gone in this one. I don't have to worry about it blowing up anyway. The cork popped in this. Huh, so it's been a very popular product around this hotel. There we go. Well, basically fishing for artifacts at this point. Just feeling all kinds of stuff down here. And uh, may have to just uh, dig in. Let's see here. Okay, we got a shoe fly flask. Let the pressure out. First shoe fly bottle we pulled out of here so far. This thing would have tried to slice me. Wow, that's intact for the most part. It's got a break on the bottom, but that's a lamp chimney. That's awesome. 
guess I'll feel around with my glove and then uh, reach for it when I feel it in case I hit some broken glass. A blob top beer. Uh, no embossing on it. That's incredible age though. Another flask, a little gun shot. I'm gonna turn away while I hold this up. It's uh, the same style we dug. Ah, the cork was jammed in that thing. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a Minnesota style whiskey bottle. It's got that swirl on the shoulder. That's awesome. This bottom layer is just packed. It's been a mess getting here. I've got water pouring in from all over the place. Fortunately, there's bottles just all over. Here's a coffin liquor flasks in great shape, clean glass. I could barely get a, my trowel through here without hitting something, so let's start pulling everything up. Uh, looks like a Mikado style flask. Or, my bad, an Olympia, 1898 patent. All right, another one of these uh, bald neck style flasks. It's amber, it's hard to tell through all the mud. Starting to think they had a saloon being run out of here. One of these fancy flasks. Oh, a big old prescription bottle. LED company on the bottom. That's a, yeah, that's a big one, wow. Oh, starting to slide into the muck. Try not to get my boots filled. Uh, let's see. That's a big old whiskey, uh, quart sized. Is it a three piece mold? I don't think so. That's uh, That's got some great age to it. Uh, a couple pieces in this corner. Let's see here. Fall out. There's a... Let's see. There it is. Looks like a prescription drugstore bottle. Uh, looks like a Rex Oval style. I find a lot of these in this era, yeah. Circa 1905 Rex Oval, no embossing, typical. And, uh, okay, shoe fly flask. Yeah, same era, Circa 1905, uh, no embossing like usual. Oh, we're battling the water table, but uh, I've noticed bottles sticking out all over the place. What's this? Looks like some kind of a uh, little medicine. DT&D. You know, I've never dug something from this company. It could be uh, the company that made the bottle. Looks like just some kind of little medicine type thing. Uh, this one's sticking out. It's a prescription bottle. Uh, no embossing. And I think we have a big old beer. Oh yeah, that's an oldie, it's a blob top. Let's see. Looks like it was made by the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company of Streeter, Illinois. This thing was sealed with a cork. It was before the pry-off cap was invented, likely. Yeah, there's the use layer. Broken bean pot. Ah, we 
got something. Oh wow. Yeah, this thing's just falling apart. Uh, Davis vegetable painkiller was a, uh, it may have had opiates in it actually. It was a popular product in the kind of Wild West era. Oh, I think this pit's almost finished. I'm working against this kind of jam we have. As soon as I dig through this, the water's gonna pour in. Uh, looks like some more liquor bottles on the way out. Oh, I've got a few. Another uh, bulb neck. I believe it's a dandy style flask. And another Olympia. Looks like uh, it's just a clear example. Oh, here we go. It's like a coffin whiskey on oh, some kind of blue bottle. Look at that color. Oh, Bromo Seltzer, Emerson Drug Company, Baltimore, Maryland. This little thing has a lot going for it. That color is something else. Coffin, coffin whiskey flask, no embossing. I've only found one ever in the Dakotas with embossing on it. Well, this jam area thing's about to go. Oh, here we go. Things we get ourselves into. But you know what? I dug through that. This pit's done. What a day. This was something else. Got a decent haul though. Got a couple beer bottles, that champagne, some medicines, a ton of drugstore bottles, that soda from Valley City. Those uh, Crocs, Lamp Globe, a bunch of whiskeys. Everything here dated back to around 1900. I'm guessing this could have been the first pit used by the hotel. We've got a ways to go, we'll get this filled back in. 